Hello crew, today we're going to work on a problem where we are going to deal with concepts of work, power, and efficiency. This is actually a pretty straightforward problem. Hopefully you find it to be that way also. I'm told in the problem that I'm designing this system that will raise a really rather large curtain for a theater. It's supposed to take exactly eight seconds to lift this 200 kilogram curtain and I also know how high it's supposed to go. Then after that, I'm given some information about the efficiencies, both with the motor and the efficiency of the pulley system that I'm going to use. So I'm asking how much power actually needs to go into the motor. So before I really start crunching any numbers, I want to point out a couple things. One, I will really be able to use either of these equations as long as I'm going about it the right way. And I can deal with efficiencies through the idea of work or I can deal with efficiencies through the idea of power. I'm probably going to go the power route on this particular one. Also, this is a problem where the forces, the applied force from the pulley is going to be up and also the displacement of the curtain is going to be up. And if these things are in the same direction, as they are in this particular problem, then I don't actually need to worry too much about the idea that I am multiplying two vectors by each other. So those two vectors being in the same direction, when I go ahead and do the dot product on them, it is going to act in the same way as if I was just multiplying the two numbers together. So I don't need to worry about any trig, any cosines or anything. So first let's identify over here that with the power variety of the efficiency equation, really you can say that the power that comes out of something is equal to the efficiency multiplied by the power that went into it. And I'm going to have a little system here that looks like this. I'm going to have some power that I want to know that's actually going to come out of, say, the electrical box here, and it's going to go into the motor. Then there's going to be a power that comes out of the motor and it goes into the pulley here. And then there's going to be a power that comes out of that. And this is the power right here that is going to actually be productive and actually lift my curtains so that these things will go up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate the power I actually need to productively lift the curtains over here. And then I will come and I'll backtrack and I'll use these efficiency ideas to figure out how much power is going to have to ultimately come from the plug. So let me go ahead and clear some board space and we'll start our calculations. All right, my pulley system is going to provide an applied force that is pointing up and it is going to counteract the FG, the weight of the curtains, which is equal to the mass times gravity for those curtains. I know I'm going to need that number. Let's go ahead and grab it right now. I have 200 kg, nice easy number to work with, multiplied by negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So the weight, the FG of these curtains is going to end up being 1,960 newtons. I'll put a negative sign on that since it's pointing down. We're going to assume that this is pulling at a constant rate so I don't have to worry about any accelerations. F net will be zero. And so the applied force on my pulley system is going to be same magnitude but opposite direction, 1,960 newtons. I said before that I might like to go ahead and work with the power variety of stuff here. Really remember that if you take this idea that power is work divided by time, if I divide both sides of this equation by time, then this is where now all of a sudden that is a P, a power, and a displacement divided by a time is a velocity. So that's how you get to this equation. So I just have to use the same time on both sides there. So I'm going to say that the power that I'm going I'm to call it the power to lift here is going to be equal to the applied force which we said was 1960 newtons multiplied by the velocity that it's going to be lifted at. Well it's going to be lifted 6.8 meters in 8 seconds. And so there you can see my meters per second coming out here. Meters per second. So that's actually my velocity there as displacement divided by time. So the power to lift is actually going to be equal to 1666 watts. Okay, That's a great number to know, but it's not the number that I need for this particular problem. So remember that I said I was going to have this pulley that sits over here, and I was going to have this motor, 
And there's some power that goes from the motor into the pulley, and then the pulley is going to deliver some power as well. Now, I just found that. That was the P lift. Over here, this is a somewhat arbitrary way to talk about it, but I'm going to call this over here. This is the power from motor, so FM. And then there would, of course, be a power uh, TM, power to the motor. And that's what I'm interested in finding. Well, I know that this pulley is 84% efficient here. And I know that my motor is 58% efficient. So now what I have to do is I just have to figure out all of these pieces parts. That's the number I just found. And that is the number that would come out. So those subscripts, the O is for out and the I is for in, power out and power in. So my efficiency for that pulley system is going to be a 0 0.84. Don't write it as the percent. That's going to mess up your numbers. Use the ratio idea. The power that comes out of the pulley was 1666 watts. And the power that goes into the pulley is what I'm calling the power FM from the motor. So the power from the motor is going to be a bigger number. If I do that algebra, I get 19 eight three watts. So now I know this number. And now I go through and I just backtrack over here as well. And so I say the 0.58% efficiency of the motor is going to be equal to its power out. So from the motor it was delivering this many watts divided by this power t dot m dot to the motor. And again this is going to get bigger. So I need 1983 divided by 0.58 and the power to the motor is going to be equal to 3, 4, I'm going to round it here, 20 watts or 3.42 kilowatts. And that's my final answer. By the way, when you have multiple things strung together like you do in this particular problem, you can actually just multiply those efficiencies together. It's not very difficult to show that this little leapfrogging here can lead you very quickly to just a multiplying effect. So if I take 84% and I multiply it by 58%, and I'm not going to do that with the numbers as written. I would use the ratios. So 0.84 times 0.58, that's equal to 0.4872 or 48.72% efficiency. And then what I can do is I can actually just compare these two numbers directly and know that they will have a combined efficiency between them of 48.72%. So I would have had a 0 0.4872 is equal to 1666 watts over the power to the motor. And if you divide this 1666 number by this fraction right here, you will find that you get the same number there as I got here. So hopefully that problem made sense to you. And if it did, you should definitely let your computer know.